Hey Taurus, this is Dana with Taurus Star Tarot and I just want to do a quick prelude to this video to let you know that this is a new series, the weekly updates. I will be doing them either Sunday night, Monday morning, maybe sometimes potentially Tuesday morning, but nevertheless, at the beginning of the week, I will do a weekly update. I will do one huge reading for the beginning of the month and then for every week thereafter, I will do a weekly update because the energies just don't have time to change and I'm tired of doing the same old readings over and over and over again. So we're going to do weekly updates from now on in addition to the one big monthly reading, okay? Y'all enjoy the video. Hello Taurus, this is Dana with Taurus Star Tarot and here is a reading for you. Another reading, a second reading for the month of March, for the first two weeks of March. I'm going to do this a little bit different. I'm going to give my spiel and everything at the end of the video. So if you'd like to hang around for that, that's where it will be. If you'd like a personal reading with me, you can reach me at TaurusStarTarot.com. And don't forget to watch your not only your sun sign, but your moon sign and your rising sign as well. Okay, we enter into this reading with the Ten of Pentacles. We enter into this reading with this particular Taurus thinking about their future. Thinking about their future. The Ace of Swords comes in and says that you have a lack of clarity, though. There's a lack of clarity. Ten of Swords tells us that you have to put an ending to a relationship with the Lover's card. Two of Swords comes in and says that you have choices to make. And you're at a crossroads and you need to make decisions, but you, you, you just, you're indecisive. You don't know what to do. Seven of Cups comes in and reiterates for us that you have choices and decisions to make about Six of Cups. This could either be family, children, or somebody that you are looking to reunite or reconcile with from your past. The Sun card comes on top and tells us that, that, that this situation, these people, the Six of Cups right here, they make you happy. They do. There is a, a huge sense of happiness and contentment and, and positivity and vitality around this Six of Cups character, whether this is children, family, or um, a lover from your past, right? This indecision right here, this, this knowing that you need to make a decision but not being able to make a decision, throws you into the hermit energy, right? Doing some soul searching, some introspection, trying to work things out, right? Being alone, looking for some inner guidance. What you're thinking about in this hermit mode is the world card. You're thinking about the completion of a life cycle and the beginning of a new life cycle. You could be thinking about travel, but either way you're seeking pers personal closure to this, this state of confusion and indecision and, and pain with the Ten of Swords, having to put an end to a, a, an important relationship in your life in order to secure your future. You're also thinking about the Two of Wands. You're thinking about planning for your future. You're thinking about what it is you're going to do to, to build this Ten of Pentacles, right? Followed by the Eight of Swords, which doesn't surprise me that it accompanies the Hermit card, right? In your head, thinking hard, hard, hard about putting an ending to a relationship so you can move forward in your life. This next row opens up with the Nine of Swords, right? Hermit mode, thinking about life cycles, potentially traveling, planning for your future in the Eight of Swords, all up in your head hard. Come down here to the Nine of Swords, you're in your head even harder. Now the Eight of Swords, right, that's a, that's a, a self-imposed mental restriction. The Nine of Swords is, is a physical physical upset, right? It's about being, I mean, the extreme definition of this card is depression, nightmares, intense anxiety, and despair, right? So you could be experiencing any degree of those feelings with this Nine of Swords right here. While you're in the hermit mode, hard, hard in your head, thinking about things that grieve you, 
in your soul. What you're thinking about is the four of wands, right? Harmony in your home, harmony in your life, and also making a transition. Five of Swords tells me that you're just full of internal conflict, obviously with the Nine of Swords, right? Full of internal conflict about the Emperor, about the control, the authority, the structure, and the establishment of your life. You come out of the Hermit and the Nine of Swords, and quite frankly, the Five of Swords. You come out of all of this with a clear vision, a decision about what you're going to do about this dilemma up here, uh, having to end a relationship with somebody that's important to your life in order to build your future. And by, by end a relationship, it doesn't mean that you have to, I mean, it could mean that you, that you have to cut them out of your life, but the, you know, the Queen of Swords isn't up here anywhere. It's just some kind of separation some kind of removing yourself from the daily activities of this Six of Cups character right here, whether this is family, kids, or somebody that you are on the brink of reconciling or reuniting with, right? So in this Nine of Swords, in the Hermit, you make this decision. You have some clarity about what you're going to do to secure the control, the authority, the establishment, and the structure of your life. Five of Cups comes in and says this decision is not without a sense of loss, disappointment, and despair. However, with the King of Swords, the decision is that you're going to move on. You're going to move on. Death comes in and says you are going to make a change. You're going to, make, you're going to have an ending. You're going to make a change. You're going to transform and transition into something new in your life. What are you transitioning into? Well, the Three of Cups, yeah, celebration, friendship, creativity, community, happiness, right? Happiness, because you have decided beyond a shadow of a doubt, beyond a shadow of a doubt, no more confusion, no more indecision, no more, no more confusion about what choices you're going to make. You have worked that out in the Hermit, and you have made an absolute decision that you are going to have a new beginning in your life and you're getting ready to head out on a brand new journey brand new journey in your life this judgment card right here reiterates what I just said you have made an absolute decision this card is about making decisions that change the trajectory of our life right so you've made this decision right here because you've made this decision, what is on the horizon for you, what is in your future, is the star card. Hope, faith, purpose, and renewal in your life. Happiness is in your future with the Ten of Cups. Values alignment, harmony, happiness. There's the hangman right here. Now that you've made this decision, unequivocally, has, have made this decision to take a new journey, to have a new beginning in your life. The hangman comes in, and this is, this is where you're planning things, right? With the hangman energy, you're pausing, right? You're letting go, and you're coming out on the other side with new perspectives. This is you processing this right here. This is you processing this, okay? In this hangman mode, you're determined with the Princess of Pentacles to manifest a new opportunity in your life. With the Queen of Pentacles being you, Taurus, you have, you're, you're determined to manifest a new opportunity in your life in regards to your home, right? Your bread basket. Where you, where you feel safe to rest your head at the end of the day. Security, right? Seven of Pentacles comes in and says that you are absolutely clear about what it is you are going to invest your time and effort into. Nine of Pentacles says there's a culmination 
obviously, because you have decided that you're going to go off on a new journey in your life. There's a culmination to the situation, and you have a sense of self-sufficiency. This is a card of an independent person, right? They have everything that they need. They're grateful for everything that they have, right? And you feel self-sufficient that, that you can do this, right? Clean, clear, self-sufficient. The Queen of Swords comes in. There she is. Queen of Swords comes in and um, is, is helping you to formulate a plan. She's a quick thinker. She's organized inside and out. She's perceptive and she's super independent, right? This is the energy that you're taking on to move forward with this vision, with this decision that you made right here. You're going to need her too, right? We got to embody that queen of swords from time to time because she gets shit done. She doesn't play. She gets shit done. This queen of swords energy is going to help you to plan for your future with the prince of, with the prince of pentacles, right? His job is to survey the kingdom to make sure everything's going right slowly, right? Slowly walk the perimeter, make sure the crops are growing, make sure the workers are working, make sure everybody has their tools and their resources. And he makes a list. He takes it back to his office and he implements it. That's what you're doing. You're assessing the, the, the landscape and you're making a plan with the help of this queen of swords energy right here. You're making a plan as to how you're going to move forward in this decision that you've made right here. Queen of wands comes in and she denotes determination, not only determination, but success as well. She's exuberant and she's vibrant and she is so determined and that's how you're going to feel, right? The queen of swords, and the Queen of Wands, they're going to team up, right? They're going to team up in, in your mental. And this, this kind of energy is, is what's going to, to implement this decision right here. <clears throat> we have, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> we have the Nine of Wands coming in. This is courage, persistence, and resilience, right? Fight mode right? And I don't mean like fight club fight mode. I mean fight mode like like there, there ain't nothing stopping you, Taurus. And believe me, when Taurus gets in this energy right here, y'all just need to stand back and let him go. Because Taurus, when Taurus takes on this Nine of Wands energy and the Queen of Wands energy, quite frankly, um, determination, courage, and persistence is the definition of a Taurus, right? Queen of Cups comes in and tells us that you know, that you know, that you know, that this is what you're supposed to be doing. This is where you're supposed to be. She's about emotional security. She's calm, cool, collected, and extremely intuitive. Hence, knowing that you know, that you know, that this is what you're supposed to do. This new journey and this new beginning right here. Despite the pain that might be associated with leaving an important relationship behind, this new journey and this new beginning that you are about to take is what you're supposed to be doing. It's where you're supposed to be, and you feel really, really good about progressing into the future. Not only do you feel good, but you are determined. You are intellectually in your mental resigned to the fact that this is what you're going to do. You're absolutely determined to be successful. You're planning for your future. You're planning, you're planning this, this move, this, this new journey and this new beginning. You're planning it. The nine of wands, determination, I'm sorry, Taurus, I lost my thought. The Nine of Wands is, um, is, backs up this determination right here, right? And it's about courage, persistence, resilience, fight mode. You're ready to do this. You're ready to go. Queen of Cups, 
you know that you know that you know that this is what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to do it. So that is your reading, friends. Um, if this is where we part ways, namaste. Now, back to what is usually at the front of the video is um, my little spiel here. So, you know, today's sun sign is Taurus, right? Taurus is how you receive information from the world. Your moon sign, whatever that may be for you, is how you process that information. It's how you feel about the world. And your ascending sign is how you return that information back to the world. So it's important to know those, not only to cross-watch for yourself or your person to get to fill in the blanks, right? To fill in the little the, the holes that are left with general readings, the ambiguity. But it's also important, um, it's also important to understand yourself right? There's a link in the box and not only yourself, but the people that you, that you deal with on a, on a regular basis. If you know your boss's sun sign, moon sign, and rising sign, which, you know, might be a little bit hard to get that information, but if you can get that information, um, you will be able to better understand how to interact with that person in order to tailor the conversation to get the results that you want to get. Does that make sense? Because if you understand how somebody communicates, you'll be able to understand how to communicate with them, right? So anyway, there's a link in the box below where you can check that out. If you would like a personal reading from me, 40 bucks, we'll hook it up just for you, just for your situation at TaurusStarTarot.com. Namaste, my friends.